Hey guys, what's up? Here's Amanda. So for today's video, as you all can tell by the title, is going to be how to make DIY laminated cash envelopes. So if you guys have absolutely no idea what this is, I basically want to turn around my whole spending issue because I'm good with money, but I do like to spend it. And I wanted to try this whole budgeting method of cash envelopes inspired by Dave Ramsey. Real quick, before we hop into it, I want to show you guys what we're going to be recreating. And so this is my little personal organizer, and in here I have what are called cash envelopes, which is when you have an envelope to store money that is for that specific cause. For example, this one says food. Then after that, I have one for pet. Uh, what is this? Personal, entertainment, blah, blah, blah. List goes on. And I'm basically going to show you all how to make these exact envelopes. However, without the label and without the whole punches. Yeah, anyway, that's what this video is going to be about. If you guys enjoy that and are interested, then go ahead and stick around. I did do a voiceover and I tried to make the process as clear as possible, so hopefully I did just that. I will link the original tutorial that I saw down below, but I did kind of alter it based off what I wanted to do and how I noticed my results were coming out. Make sure to go ahead and follow me on Instagram, subscribe down below, give this video a thumbs up, and comment any questions you may or may not have and whether or not you want a budget, try to Budget. and so yeah without further ado let's go ahead and hop in hey guys so this is my own little personal planner that I bought myself from Michaels so in here I keep my own little cash envelopes and so I have just a couple with my most frequent little expenses and for the stickers I used vinyl and a Cricut but that's not what we're gonna be going over in this tutorial we're gonna be talking about how to make these laminated cash envelopes so first you need some scissors to go ahead and trim and cut and if you do not have this cutting board, then you also need those scissors to kind of just cut your paper in general. Then lastly, you need your decorated paper or cardstock, whatever you prefer or whatever you have. It does not have to be printed, but this is the exact paper pack that I use. It is also from Walmart. It was on, I mean, Michael's, sorry. <laughs> it was on sale when I went, and these are just a couple of the different patterns that it has. It's super pretty, super tropical. I love it. So the first thing you want to do is go ahead and go through your paper pack and rip out whatever papers you want to use. Now they do not have to be 12 by 12. My brother used regular sized printer paper and it worked just fine. So once you have all your little patterns picked out, you're going to go ahead and just set them aside and we will start cutting. So now that we have our paper picked out, as you can see, I do have some pre-cut paper from my first round of envelopes, as well as some that are not cut, which are the ones I'm going to be showing you all how to cut out. So using this cutting board, I personally prefer this method over scissors, mainly because it's just a lot easier for me. I feel I can get cleaner lines. And this exact pegboard also, it's not a pegboard, <laughs> cutting board also has a little retractable ruler that I like to use. So once you set up your cutting method, whether it is this board or scissors, you want to go ahead and take out your first piece of paper. So the first cut we are going to do is make sure our paper is six inches tall. This is because when we fold our envelope, we should get an envelope with a height of three inches. So here I'm just lining it up and pushing it up to the top to make sure that it's completely straight before making my first cut. So as you can see my cutting board did not make the full cut which is then when I would get my scissors and split the two pieces in half. So I personally want to take the larger of the two pieces and set that aside for my envelopes. And now we're just going to go ahead and complete, not complete, continue this process with the other pieces of paper that we have. Make sure you cut it six inches tall. So once we have our different rectangles with a height of six inches, we're going to head and we're going to go ahead and make our second cut, which is going to make sure that our envelopes are seven inches wide. This will ensure that our little cash bills will fit in these envelopes perfectly, nice and snug. So this side we don't want to cut because that is our six inch side. We're going to cut this other side to 7 inches, which will then leave you with a smaller piece of paper that you can either recycle or use for something else. Um, so the same process with lining it up to 7 inches and making sure it's straight before making our cut. Then we will just do this for every other piece of paper after that and make sure we have the same sized envelopes. So 
So once we finish cutting all of them and setting our extra pieces aside, this is kind of what we're left with and you can measure just to make sure, but you always want to make sure that you keep the six inch sides as your height just so you don't get confused when you're making other cuts. The way I was able to tell with this is that the flamingo is right side up which means that I have it facing the right way so if I fold these papers in half right now they will have a height of three inches. Okay, so this next step is obviously very self-explanatory. We're just folding each paper in half. That way we're left with a 3 by 7 envelope. So this is kind of important to get straight, but at the same time not really because we do trim the top of our envelopes. Anyway, it's just kind of up to you. So once you're done folding each envelope, now we're going to laminate. So you obviously need a laminator. I am not sure where this one's from at all, but a lot of people on YouTube use the Amazon laminator, which if I can, I'll link that down below. Um, but after that, you clearly need laminating sheets. This is a pack of 100, probably from Walmart. Once again, not completely sure. But next, what I'm going to do is go ahead and plug in my laminator. That way, the preheating process can start. So, I'm my personal laminator has a little glowing light, so that lets me know that it's on, which a switch indicates that. Then I flipped the other switch to go ahead and make sure my laminator heats up. And so when that green light is shining, that's how I know it's done. So next I'm going to go ahead and take out a couple of laminating sheets to go ahead and use. So when I open up the first one, the way we're going to lay our sheets with this specific setup is the openings facing inwards. And this is because I found that most air bubbles showed up in between the two top envelopes, which since we're going to cut the top of them off anyway, it was best to have that side have the most aggravating air bubbles, if you will. So I placed my envelopes with the openings facing each other and you want to push it up to the top but not right into the seam that way you have enough room for this last envelope to have the opening facing downward so now that my laminator is done preheating it's time to feed the first laminate sheet in so the first one is never the best one so make sure to put your least favorite patterns first but basically what you want to do is kind of hold it by the two top envelopes that way nothing moves around too much then once you start feeding it, the laminator will kind of just take it on its own. And don't worry if the bottom one falls out, you do have time to adjust it. So as you can see right now, I'm kind of moving it around and I'm going to hold it on that spot until it gets fed into the laminator. Also, because I don't want any mess ups, which I did have, um, but that doesn't even matter. So once this sheet is done feeding through, which kind of takes a while, I will then check it for air bubbles because you want to make sure that the air bubbles around the perimeter of your paper are not too large. The larger they are, the harder it will be to trim them down small and still keep your envelope closed um, since the laminate is what seals the three sides of your envelope. So now we're going to go ahead and just take our other laminating sheets and fill them with the other envelopes. So my footage for this for the rest of the envelopes did get lost but basically after i fed them through the laminator i trimmed them with scissors to go ahead and separate them i didn't cut them down exactly it was more so just to get each envelope on its own so these as you can see i did already cut because that footage was also lost but with this watermelon one all i did was cut the top off to open the envelope which i'll show you all in a little bit but as for the three other sides you kind of want to just gauge the perfect cut for you like you want to make sure that you do not open the air bubble closest to the paper because once again that'll just leave a hole in your envelope so kind of get as close to it as you can without actually cutting into it now there are going to be spots where you do have to cut a little piece off but just kind of use your own judgment so now to actually open your envelope you want to make sure the bottom hinge is lined up with the three inch mark so you may or may not end up coming, cutting off a small piece of the paper. That's completely fine. You just need your envelope to actually open. Um, when I was doing my first round of envelopes, I did cut off small pieces of paper. But this entire round, I was mainly just cutting off laminate. So now I'm just kind of trimming down and opening each envelope to make sure I have fully functional ones. So this is basically the process of how to DIY your own little laminate. 
envelopes. Now, if you wanted a hole punch them, that's a whole different step, whether or not you have a hole puncher. But these are how mine came out. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. If you did, make sure to let me know by giving it a big old thumbs up. I do plan on making different budgeting videos, so stick around for that. But I love you guys all, and I will talk to you guys later. Bye.